I'm really interested to see what these keys are, Jake. Let's get it right away for the Bengals. What are the three keys here? So I'll go with a couple. James, you can throw in as well. First, I'm looking at whether Trey Hendrickson in this defensive line can take advantage of those tackles of the Kansas City Chiefs. And like the Chiefs had issues getting Lamar Jackson to the ground last week, the Bengals had issues getting Jacoby Brissett to the ground. Talked about it earlier. Doesn't get easier with Patrick Mahomes. And that interior competition is worlds different, tiers different from the top of the NFL to the bottom of the NFL comparing the Chiefs to the Patriots. So the task gets harder, but if they're getting pressure and can abuse those tackles, can they get Mahomes to the ground? That's one for me. Two is, Chris, you talked about the ability to get doubles to Jamar Chase with the absence of T. Higgins. And one thing that we saw very successful for the Bengals in week one is when they went to 12 personnel featuring rookie Eric All Jr., and veteran Drew Sample, a couple of tight ends more willing and more able to block than the Mike Gusecki and Tanner Hudson duo, two of the other tight ends that were active for the Bengals in week one. I'm interested to see if they get to that 12 personnel package a little bit more than we're used to for an 11 dominant team in the Cincinnati Bengals, and if they're able to use that to their advantage both in the run game and to generate some looks for explosives in the passing game. James, what would you add to that? Well, yeah, explosives, huge. I mean, that, that would probably be number one if I had to rank them. But the, the other thing, if it's bringing Patrick Mahomes down, it's also making sure that you tackle Rasheed Rice and Isaiah Pacheco, probably not in that order, Pacheco and Rice. I mean, they struggled tackling yeah. last week. Such a huge issue. And if you're in these one-on-one -on -one situations, I get it. The Chiefs love it if it's Isaiah Pacheco versus a cornerback. But the Bengals have to win those. They just do, especially because the Patriots' interior of their offensive line, much, much different than what they're yeah. going to be facing on Sunday at Arrowhead. I mean, that's such a huge edge, I think, in difference between last week and this week is is dealing with Smith and, and, and Tooney and um, who am I missing? Creed. Creed. And Creed Humphrey, Humphrey, yeah, the guy that I talk about more than anyone, actually, <laughs> because the Bengals, the Bengals picked Jackson Carmen over him, and I, I still haven't forgiven them. And so, yeah, I think uh, – that's such a huge factor because if and Jake said it at the beginning, there's a very real possibility where the chiefs are like, Psh, Isaiah, we're, we're going to run for 200 today. And I'm not sure the Bengals are going to be able to do much to stop it. And that's such a, a key, especially early in this one. Yeah. I thought the, the Bengals defensive interior actually held up against the Patriots. And that was what we thought the problem would be. I'm not so convinced that will repeat this week, but <laughs> on top of that, like you said, James, they got to tackle the yak disparity. You talk about uh, the, uh, the polar opposites. The Patriots were the best tackling team in the NFL in week one. The Bengals' yak was, was dismal. And this is a yak league right now. Averaged up the target across the league down. The Chiefs, on the other hand, best yak team in the NFL in week one. Tackling, can't, can't underline that one enough from, from the Bengals' perspective. That's a great shout, James. What about you guys from the Chiefs' side of things or, or any comments there from and any of the keys that we've identified before we get to the Chiefs keys. I just want to say thank you, James, want... for uh, your comments on Creed. Uh, I, we appreciate you guys not drafting him and taking Carmen instead. <laughs> just want to throw that out there. Sorry. Come on, salt the wounds, but what you doing? What? Uh, our Toon listeners Toonie... already don't like the Chiefs, man. What Tooney Smith in 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 Humphrey <laughs> in the same freaking off season. I mean, yeah. my God. And Ooh. all three of those guys could have been Bengals. Like and, we and could at be least talking two, about opposites right now. And at least two, right? Yeah. Like Smith and Creed, especially yeah. Creed. Like Smith, whatever. I don't know the medicals and what they had. But anyways, what uh, what are the Chiefs keys, guys? I'll echo one of Jake's. Uh, and, and Chris, you can, you can hit the highlights. For me, it's about doing what you didn't do last week. You put rookie Kingsley Sumatia out there on an island and said, go take care of business. Trey Anderson is not going to be that guy. I, I guarantee that. So how do you help him? It's not just about chipping a little bit. I do think they have to run a little bit more 12 personnel. Give him a body outside of him so that he can kind of play off of that. But I will say what he lacks in experience, I think he does make up for in arm length and footwork. So I think this is going to be a premier battle. They just got to come up on top of it. You know, one of the biggest things for me is the pressure. Kansas City and, and Ryan kind of talked about this earlier, and, and we've alluded to it a little bit uh, as well, or I alluded to it a little bit as well, but you didn't get Lamar Jackson down. And you got pressure on the quarterback, but you couldn't get him to the ground. You guys had the same problem with Brissett. Uh, that's a huge thing for Kansas City. And I'm not trying to take a shot at Joe Burrow, but he's not Lamar Jackson when you're talking about moving around in the pocket and being able to run. 
Uh, and so how much is that going to play into the Chiefs being able to get him down? They've struggled at times with Burrow in the past, so I'm not saying that, that it's going to be something where they're going to get six or seven sacks, but I do think that that's going to be a huge key in this game is can they actually get him down to the ground? Can they get a couple of sacks and uh, be successful getting the pressure and, and getting home? I, I hear you there. Joe Burrow, when the Bengals have beaten the Chiefs, has been effective in making guys miss. And yeah. when the Chiefs have had their win, or their their most imp- impressive or important win, going back to that AFC Championship, it was when Chris Jones was able to finish the play and finish the game. And, and that certainly is a factor. The Bengals, meanwhile, will have their hands full trying to figure out how to block Chris Jones again. And so that is always one of the marquee matchups that you highlight. And outside of that, there are some some strength on weakness mismatches or also some strength on strength uh, pieces of, of interest to me where I, I thought that in the few instances where the Bengals were challenged in coverage, I thought that their corners actually held up okay. I think it's a bigger test this week with the Chiefs' weapons. Interested to see how this secondary reacts in a, in a game that might see a heavier pass focus from the Kansas City Chiefs as well. So I think we're going to learn a little bit more about both of these teams this week, guys. Excited to see how this one plays out on Sunday. And how about the Chiefs getting two AFC North teams out of the way early at home? How about that for the schedule makers, huh? With those extra days of rest, what what a gift from the schedule makers, huh? Uh, I You say gift. I'm going to say I don't think it was a gift the way we looked at the <laughs> schedule to start the season. I'm just saying if you have to play those I, I teams, get what you're at saying. least you get the rest. No, no, no. I, I get what you're saying, and I completely agree with you, but when you look at those first two weeks, and it's the Ravens and the Bengals, the, the team you played in the AFC Championship game this past year, and a Bengals team that's always played you tough and, and had your number more times than not more recently, uh, that doesn't feel like a gift, but I completely agree. The rest is a huge deal, uh, so I think that that could play into it as well, and, and uh, this is not a fun schedule for the Chiefs, but it's the NFL, and it's not ever going to be a fun schedule, so... Looking forward to this game, though, gentlemen. For sure. Should be a good one. I uh, I look forward to some barbecue and some non-December Kansas City weather. It's supposed to be like 86 on Sunday. Wow. Like, sign me up. Let's go. 